But what do you say to those who say God is there but powerless and therefore irrelevant? Many here in England believe that God may exist but that he does not do anything to affect our lives. This is Dennis from Colchester, England. So we, we kind of hear the great clockmaker or just the fact that God is indifferent. I wonder if they think a devil exists and he doesn't care either. I'm not sure. What do you think? Yeah, well, uh, actually, God, of course, uh, uh, Dennis, God does care, uh, you know, and not only does he, he care, he is absolutely involved in our lives. I think what people misunderstand is, is the fact that, you know, when suffering is going on or there's some manifestation of evil, we have to remember that first and foremost, God must honor our freedom and the freedom of the people that we touch. So, I mean, there has to be some kind of voluntary dimension to, um, uh, you know, ridding ourselves of, of uh, evil, ridding another of evil, or having, uh, you, know, you know, it's very important for a possessed person to want to be freed from the evil that they recognize. Don't, you know, people are not like possessed all the time, right? The possession, you know, manifests itself, right, with the rolling back the eyes and so forth and, 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 and the uh, translate state. But many times people look perfectly normal mm. walking down the street, who, you know, who could be a possessed person or, or something of that nature. So the main thing, though, that, that you, we want to remember is, you know, God isn't going to solve suffering if that suffering can actually help you to your salvation. Number two, he's not going to resolve suffering or evil if that suffering or evil can help you to help others to salvation. Number three, God isn't going to resolve suffering or evil by undermining your freedom. And number four, God isn't going to solve suffering or evil by undermining the freedom of others that you touch. So those four conditions mm -hmm. always, ever and always must be met in order for, um, uh, you know, God to work through us. And of course, God does work through us. God, I mean, these exorcisms are successful. Mm -hmm. These prayers of deliverance are successful. These healing ministries, uh, you know, are successful. But it, it, again, it, you have to... Uh, uh, really, the efficacy mm -hmm. of prayer is dependent on those four conditions being met. But a, a, a person who's inexperienced mm -hmm. or a person who doesn't go to church, it's very easy for that person to say, God doesn't care. He's not doing anything because mm -hmm. they have a completely unnuanced understanding of how God works and wants to work through us and how he does care for us in our freedom and toward our salvation. We well, think he's like the great genie in the sky that we have some wishes that we get to use. And if they're not answered, that means right. he's not yeah. interested, he's not there, I guess, yeah. in some ways.